just inside the front water line on both sides. And a little stop cut. So to me the idea of mortising is creating a divot and moving the waste into that divot. I think that's a fairly standard understanding of mortising. So I'm scribing the outside edges. I usually don't have to do that if I marked it with the marking gauge because that marked them all parallel. So once I've got it outlined, then I want to start in the middle. So I'm marking it on the outside. When that piece flips out, I kept that edge all clean. Important to scribe all the way around. So then I'm going to V group, then I'm going to just work down into that miter cut there. We're going halfway from both sides. But do the mortise first, so if something happens, I can make it, I can adjust the tenon to make it work. Because it's easier to make saw the tenon to fit the mortise is trying to make the mortise fit the tenon. I don't want to do that. I want to go back to my layout lines. So once I get down, as I'm going down, I'm moving back and I'm getting the V groove in here. One thing that really helps too, if you sharpen your chisel, that cutting edge has to be squared in the direction of the chisel. If you sharpen it, it's crooked a little bit, then when you hit it, it goes in at an angle and you're always fighting to keep it square. So when you're sharpening, you got to be thorough with every step. That's basically what it comes back to. This one's got a little ding at the edge. So as I go down, I go back, I stay away from that outside edge just so when I go back to pair it, the only thing I need to do here is I chop sideways just to break the piece. So the edge of this chisel is really sharp, so you got to be careful sliding it by your finger, and that's what cuts the wood as it goes through. And then you want to keep all that little chippy stuff from right underneath there. So now I want to come back and do this side. I'm going to do the mortise first for my accuracy. And go back and want to start in the middle. Work from both ends. Alright, that's through already. So I don't want to chisel this side from the top. I'm working halfway through from both sides. And I'm going to go back. I got a hole in the middle. I'm going to go back and work back the shoulder. <clears throat> now I've got all that stuff in there. I can poke it out that way. That's why I got this little punch for them. You get all your stuff in the middle. Especially you get the bigger stuff. So I've cut that one. I've cut the hole in the middle. I've got a little hump in the middle here. i got a little hump in the middle there that's a V-shaped. As I was cutting through here, what I was doing was I had my lines here. I started to cut a V this way. And I came in from the other side and I got that V. Then I started working this back to the shoulder instead of trying to guess where that shoulder is. So I can tell that when I start looking at this. <coughs> so I pair this out if you need to chisel it. So if I'm having problems, with tear out, then I can pair with the vertical side and use this bevel as plumb line. Because what happens when I hit it with the chisel, I've got force going down, but I've got pressure against this against the end grain. A lot of wood pulls out and you get a big hole in the middle of the grain pulling out. If you're going down this way, there's no the shear it just pulls out. If you're hitting this way, you won't pull that out because you're pressing against the surface with this edge that's pushing against it and it's going down. Then even when I'm pairing, sometimes I go that way and I'm using this vertical because I can see what I'm doing. When the chisel's here, I, my hand's in the way. So if I turn around this way, then I can go this way. What also helps is as I cut down, it goes into the waist. If I'm pairing this way, it's going to undercut the other shoulder. So I'm just working back to that shoulder halfway from this side. You got too much to so I'll really go back and clean up those edges when I get done. Thank you. 